Hamilton and Mike Pringle. He's the all-time leading CFL rushing leader. Tucker, he's got it. Touchdown. Gabriel is open to the end zone. Touchdown. And it's a warm evening here in the city of Baltimore. 95 degrees at kickoff time, a northwest wind, 15 miles per hour. Very humid evening as well, and Memphis has won the toss they are receiving. This is Anthony Jordan from his 11-yard line. And Jordan gets up to the 30 before being stopped. 15-yard gain, your quarterback, Damon Allen, 57%. His numbers are up a little bit this year. Four touchdowns, eight interceptions offensively for Memphis. Damon Allen is their leader at quarterback, and Joe Horn is the most veteran receiver that they have on this team at this point because of a number of injuries they've suffered. So they'll start first down. And they give it to Shipman. Shipman trying to bounce it outside, cuts it in. Al Shipman gets up close to the 50-yard line. Gain of 18 yards for the rookie out of the University of Miami defensively for Baltimore. Alfred Payton leads the CFL in sacks with 10. Matt Goodwin, last year's CFL Rookie of the Year, is that outside linebacker. And Irv Smith, an all-east performer, number 21, the right cornerback. Good look at Al Shipman there, and it's important that they start this thing off right. He's taking Gary Anderson's place, who was injured during the week. And on first down, this one incomplete intended for Joe Horn. But there's a flag on the play at the 50-yard line, the Memphis 50. And Damon Allen, we looked at his numbers, Danny. They're up a little bit, but the production of this offense, as we've talked about in our open, is down. And in a way, they're wondering why. They really have. They've only scored seven touchdowns, three by the run, four by the pass, two by return. That makes it nine in total, but seven offensively. Offside, Memphis number 15, declined, second down. Why did they bring so the ball Memphis the side? called for the offside penalty. Kendrick Jones, rookie out of the University of Tennessee. That'll make it second down and 10 yards to go from the three. and here's Allen in trouble firing underneath complete to Horn and Joe Horn makes the reception OJ Brigance with the tackle but Joe Horn really delivering a lick gain of 16. Damon Allen being able to do the things that he does best get away from the heat then see, keep looking downfield, open up. Now find the open receiver who's worked hard to find the open spot in that zone. And Joe Horn comes up with his 27th catch of the season. And that makes it first down for Memphis. And they give it to Shipman, and Shipman has plenty of daylight. Hauled down from behind, but little Al Shipman gets to the 25-yard line. Another huge gain for him on his second carry. This time, 17 yards. Give the ball deep to Shipman, because this guy's got great vision and tremendous acceleration. He runs a 4-2-8-40, and this guy can make a lot of things happen. Good blocking up front by Brown and Ritter off of that right side. Al Shipman left the University of Miami after his junior season, had some academic problems and decided to come into the CFL. He's the youngest player in the Canadian Football League. And on first down, they keep the ball on the ground. Bruce Perkins running it. Third-year player out of Arizona State gets to the 20. For Damon Allen in this offense, this has got to be some tremendous confidence builder to be able to rush the ball against a very potent defense in Baltimore and seeing to be able to move the ball very handily. And that's a good look at the at the go chart that they have for Damon Allen on his wrist that he checks his plays and wants to call him under certain situations on the field. Gain of six, second and four, incomplete. Intended for Kendrick Jones, but he heard some footsteps as Courtney Griffin was right on top of the play. Big kicks, he's going to look and try to turn back, and he's going to throw some quick slant route. The ball's there. That's the kind of thing that Kendrick Jones has to make. When you've got an opportunity to make the big play, come up big. 
And that brings Nick on the Meistrom field goal unit for Memphis. This is Nick Maestrom, who is also a slot back, one for four on the year. 27 a yard attempt. His holder is Damon Allen. And Maestrom nails a field goal, and the Baltimore Stallions are now trailing Memphis 3 0 with 11.32 remaining in the first quarter of play. And we're back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore where the Memphis Mad Dogs have taken a 3 0 lead, and Memphis goes eight plays for 60 yards, and Maestrom nails a 27 yard field goal for our first score of the game and that's something this Memphis team wants to do and that's get some points on the board as early as possible. And that's exactly they've had a lot of trouble scoring touchdowns and field goals. They actually lead the league in singles which isn't going to help them win a lot of football games. But from that drive right there to be able to take the ball move it down as good as they did get it in the field goal ring and come away with some points again is a very positive thing for the Memphis Mad Dogs. So here's Aaron Canner kicking off. And this will be Mike Pringle at the 15. Pringle breaks it outside. He's got a convoy in front of him. And Mike Pringle, a great run, gets up close to midfield. He may be in Memphis territory, depending on the spot. Gain of 36. A little confusion in the backfield as far as who's going to receive it, but Pingo is the guy that comes up with it, and he's tremendous burst of speed, and guys know if they get out in front, make one little block, get a little piece of somebody, Mike Pringle can make a lot of things happen, and you talk about bringing the ball back to midfield, giving Tracy Ham first and 10 on the 55. Mike Pringle last year, the number one rusher in the CFL, comes into this game as the number two rusher in the league. And on first down, they give it to Pringle last year's Eastern most outstanding player and your quarterback Tracy Ham and Danny he's been doing it well in this league for a long time. This is a guy who's been a little hurt and he got hurt with his foot last week but it seems to be doing pretty well now. Nick Subis number 51 comes back at center after sitting out five games with a rib injury and Mike Pringle and Tracy Ham we've talked about him but keep your eye on Chris Armstrong number 81 he leads this team in every receiving category. Second down Nine yards to go. Ham's going to let it fly, and it's complete. At the 42, that's Chris Armstrong with his first reception of the game. From Memphis, defensively, they've got one of the best front lines in the CFL, Danny. Well, they certainly do. This is a defense that comes in that is a veteran defense. It may be a first-year team, but these guys all have CFL experience. Cofield and Harding last year with 16 sacks apiece, tied for second in the CFL. The completion of Armstrong makes it first and 10 from the 42-yard line. Play action for him. Sets his feet, going to the end zone for Culver. Incomplete, Skinny Culver at least had three yards on the closest Memphis defender, but Ham couldn't put it on him. Skinny, Skinny Culver is a guy that didn't have an opportunity last year because of some immaturity to play for the Baltimore Stallions, but this time he does a little shift. You can see there's got to be a mix-up in the secondary of Memphis because all of a sudden Damian Lyons, the corner, was expecting to have deep help. Skinny ran by everybody. And Tracy Ham just overthrew the open Skinny Cole. Culver played one game with Baltimore last year and quit the team. Sat out the entire year, came back in shape and with a better attitude and got a starting job. And here's Ham throwing again. Incomplete. Robert Clark, the intended receiver, and once again he had a step this time on Junior Robinson. So Ham throwing the ball vertically a little bit, and that's not normally what he's accustomed to doing. Well, I think Tracy's one of those kind of guys. He's very patient about some things, and he can nickel and dime it, take exactly what you give him. But maybe he felt after that big drive that Memphis had coming down there, scoring that, that uh, field goal to begin with, that he needed to reciprocate and make something happen quickly. And that's why he was trying to take it downtown early. Brings on Carlos Huerta for a 50-yard field goal attempt. Huerta 
23 of 29 on the year, and low line drive. He nails it. Carlos Huerta, 50-yard field goal, and he ties his game up at three. 8.59 remaining in the first quarter of play. We've got a tie score from Baltimore. Memphis leads Baltimore on the road 6-3 in the first quarter of play. Gus, it's surprising. I think Memphis has had some great success so far. Don Matthews said yesterday that his team is a team that expects absolutely to go out there and win every game. They were kind of peeved off last week of losing that game to Calgary, and they think right now that they're going to bounce back extremely. The first little few minutes that we have seen so far, they may be taking Memphis a little lightly, and Memphis is having some opportunity to score some points early. Memphis comes into this ball game with a three and four record, while Baltimore is at five and two, and Memphis 0 and 1 versus Southern Division teams. And offensively, we've told you about their struggles, but talking to Damon Allen, this team is so confident with their defense that if the offense could just give them a little bit then they think they can win. The big thing that's happened is that offense is helping to rest that defense a little bit, which can give them more opportunity. And this will be the return specialist, Chris Wright, who leads the CFL in all-purpose yards. They set it up on the right side, and Wright picks up good yardage, gets close to the 40-yard line. They'll spot it at about the 38. Run back of 17 yards. And Tracy Ham on his first couple of possessions, his Baltimore offense hadn't looked as crisp as it normally does. He didn't have he, he came in, he said that he was going to take whatever they had to give him, and he wasn't going to take it downtown the first couple series. He was trying to make something big happen. Maybe Tracy will settle down now, come back to that perceived game plan, and be able to move that ball methodically down the field for the Baltimore Stallions. Stallions averaged 225 yards passing per game. They set up the quick screen to Pringle and He's tackled from behind at the 44. Middle linebacker Greg Battle with the stop. Now, now this is just kind of a, a, actually it's just a running screen where they're going to try to get Pringle out there one on one. They're hopefully that they got man coverage, but they don't. Memphis is catches them. They get, put them in a zone defense and the great pursuit of that middle linebacker Greg Battle out of Arizona State is able to cut, cut that game to only about five yards. Gain of five, second and five. Short drop again, Culver working on Don Odegaard, almost broke away, but he's all down at midfield, which in the CFL is a 55-yard line. Now this is a, a new experience for Odegaard, I, I think, as far as the CFL is concerned. He is a converted safety, but because of some of the injuries that have taken place in the Memphis secondary, he is playing the corner, and it is a tough grind. And, and obviously, Odegaard has to really respect the kind of speed that a Shannon Skinny Culver has. Odegaard picked by the Bengals in the sixth round of the 1990 NFL draft. First down and 10 from midfield. Inside handoff to Pringle. Cuts it back in, and Mike Pringle gets to the 48 tackle by Bartow. Baltimore doing some counter stuff here and trying to make this Memphis team have to chase Pringle around. They do a good job of walling off on the outside. Pringle following his block. That's Neil Fort, the big tackle that he gets in front. Danton Bartow. The outside linebacker does a terrific job fighting off the block, getting down the line of scrimmage and making that tackle. Gain of seven. Second and three. And a penalty flag. Looks like some movement on the defensive line of the Mad Dogs this time. Stephen Bates. Fourth year player out of James Madison. Offside. Memphis 92. First down. Offside. Just to repeat, one of the rules in the Canadian Football League, the defensive line has had to line up a yard off the line of scrimmage. And Stephen Bates was just trying to anticipate that count. Tracy Ham came in there, gave him the stutter count, that hut, hut, hut. And all of a sudden, Bates was in the backfield, just called for the flag. First down. Here's Ham. Under pressure, Ham's going to let it fly, and it's incomplete. Good defensive pressure by Tim Cofield who's second in the CFL in sacks this year with eight. 
Good containment on the outside. Alex Gordon is the guy. He working on Neil Ford, the big cuz. Left ta right tackle forces Tracy Ham to have to get outside. And Colfield, with the terrific speed that he has in pursuit from the backside, gets to Tracy just as he's releasing the ball and forces him to throw the ball short. Second down and 10 from the 43. For Tracy Ham. Won two national championships at Georgia Southern. Playing for Irk Russell. And here's Ham again. Letting it go to the near side. Complete inside the 15. Chris Armstrong with the reception. His second big one of the game. Easy pattern. Sprint out to the right. Throw back. Post corner. Now he gets Junior Robinson all turned around. Tracy Ham has plenty of time to throw the ball, and it turns out to be a 30-yard reception. Chris Armstrong led the team in all three receiving categories in 1994, 72 receptions for 1,586 yards and 18 touchdowns. Baltimore deep inside Memphis territory at the 14. Here's Ham passing on first down in the end zone, and it's intercepted. Eric Nelson with the interception in the end zone, and he brings it out to the 10-yard line. Only the fifth interception of the year by Tracy Ham. Eric Nelson, a rookie out of Memphis, picks up his first pick of the year. Good coverage in the secondary by Memphis. Tracy's going to sprint out. He wants to throw to the outside, but now he comes back to his third receiver, and he holds the ball a little too long, tries to find Armstrong in the middle, but Eric Nelson playing a terrific center field. Looks that ball in, picks it up, maybe makes a bad decision to bring it out, but if they don't, if they give up a, a, a penalty, I mean a single point to Baltimore, but in this case, they turn the ball back over to that offense, and Damon Allen, they scrimmage it out, first and 10. 13th interception of the year for this Mad Dogs team. And they have the ball now on their own 10. On first down, they stay on the ground, and here's Lyle Shipman, and Shipman continues to pull his way ahead and he'll tack on additional yardage to this gain as Al Shipman, somebody grabbed his face mask. Shipman gets the ball deep, the kind of series that you want to call, call a search series. You want to give it to him deep, let him find the search and find the open spot. And that looks like Alfred Payton, number 56, who's hustling over there to try to get in on the tackle. Grabs a hold of the mask, he'll tack on 15 from that point. Don Matthews a little concerned on his sideline with the way his team is playing right now. But for Memphis, they're doing a very good job rushing the football. They're third in the CFL in rushing, averaging 109 yards a game. Short drop by Allen to the far side, complete. Joe Horn, another reception for him, but he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. A very dangerous pass by Damon Allen that time. He comes out just a quick three-step drop. It's a, it's a hitch to the wide side. I'm oh, sorry, then Foggy that should take. Ricky Foggy, University of Minnesota's all-time leader in total offense. And more than a good enough backup. Second down and four. Here's Foggy. Pocket breaks, but he gets it off anyway, and an incomplete pass because Al Shipman unable to haul it in. As you take a look at the owner of the Baltimore Stallions, Jim Sparrows, who has definitely brought a winner to this town. He started off, and this is a guy that is a big motivator, a big believer in the CFL, and he's starting to build his franchise. He went right to Don Matthews and put a lot of... Memphis number 81, penalties declined. Third... Oh. Just to finish that thought, put a lot of faith in Don Matthews who surrounded himself by some great Canadian talent. So we're at the end of the first quarter. Memphis with the surprise 6-3 six lead, six lead over Baltimore. From the beautiful city of Baltimore, it's a 6-3 game as the Memphis Mad Dogs lead it in a Southern Division matchup. Stallions last year with 14 and 6 advancing to the Great Cup and eventually losing to DC. Well, at that time they weren't the Stallions, they were the Baltimore CFLs and playing here at Memorial Stadium 
a number of great, great professional athletes are decorating the walls here. Johnny and Ninus. We don't have to say much about Johnny Yu with the Baltimore Colts. The ring honor there. There's a lot of pressure on these Canadian Football League players to play with a lot of respect and a lot of honor. They have a lot of things to live up to that these people of Baltimore are used to. First down at 10 from the 53. Here's Pringle. Mike Pringle gets up to the 45 seven yard game as Greg Battle and Donton Bardo come up with the hit. Battle in his ninth year out of Arizona State. This is a guy two times in the CFL has been named most valuable defensive player when he was with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers between 1987 and 1993. They sent three receivers to the far side of the field. Second down and three. Here's Pringle and a nice play in the backfield. That's Cardo again somehow managing to shake off his man and make contact with Mike Pringle. Bardo jumps on the line of scrimmage and anticipates the snap, and then he has terrific penetration, gets the left arm out before Mike Pringle can even get going, and makes a terrific second down play, sets up third down in the field goal for Carlos Huerta. Carlos Huerta, 53-yard field goal attempt here. He's one for one from 50 yards and out. Dan Crowley, the third string quarterback, the holder. And it's good. Carlos Huerta, as Don Matthews likes to say, the most dangerous weapon on the team, nails the 52-yarder, and it's a tie score, 6-6, here in the second quarter. Take a look at the top right of your screen. That's Pringle 27, the left guard on that side. Withercombe's just going to pull inside trap play. He follows Withercombe up the field. The ball pops out all of a sudden. And there is Eric Nelson, the safety, the guy that comes up with a big turnover and keeps Memphis back alive. They're bending, but they're not breaking against this first place Baltimore Stallion team. 15th fumble of the year for Baltimore as Rodney Harding was shaken up on the last play, a four-time All-Eastern All-Star. Had 16 sacks last year, which was tied for second in the CFL. And Mike Pringle and the Baltimore Stallions have had problems fumbling the ball. They fumbled the ball 15 times as opposed to their opponents who only fumbled the ball six times when playing Baltimore. Ricky Foggy starts from his own 12-yard line, first down and 10. 10.07 left in the second quarter, and he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Crowd's getting into it now. Complete up to the 21-yard line. Eight-yard gain for Brad Breedlove. And, when, and, and Danny, when you're a quarterback coming into the ball game as a replacement, what kind of plays do they want to run for you so you can get yourself ready to play or get yourself in a groove? Well, obviously you want to run some plays that you're going to have some success with, but also they've had some opportunity through the course of that first quarter to see exactly what they're able to do against this very tough Baltimore defense, and he's doing that. He's gained nine in the last play, and on second and short, they give it straight ahead to Bruce Perkins, and he picks up the first down. Bruce Perkins is a guy that has a lot of CFL experience with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in 1993. Led the CFL in rushing attempts with 173 attempts. Gained 812 yards. He's a big man, 6'2 and a half, 232 out of Arizona State. Slashing, powerful type runner. First and 10 from the 25. Foggy out of the gun. Under pressure, gets it off. Caught by Breedlove at the 32, tackled by Tracy Gravely, but there is a flag on the play. Late flag, look for holding. May have saw it right in the middle. It looked like Vance Hammond, number 61, the center. Holding. 
56 Memphis. Roughing the passer, Baltimore number 56. Five yard penalty, five yard first down. Right in the middle, you could see your Ricky Foggy looking downfield, but at the last minute, that was number 99, Demetrius Maxey, that gets up the field, and it looks like Vance Hammond, as I said, number 61, that came over to try to cover up, and he pulled him down from behind. So it's now first down and 10 from the 30. Joe Horn splits out to the top of your screen. Here's Shipman. And Shipman wrestled down at the 32-yard line. O.J. Brigance, the former All-Western Division player when he played for B.C., makes a tackle. Very active middle linebacker. This is one of the, the, the best in the CFL and one of the nicest men that you want to meet. This guy makes a lot happen. He's not that big, six foot, about 220 pounds, but he can cover from sideline to sideline as well as anybody in this league. Al Shipman still running the ball effectively. Five carries, 58 yards. Second and six. They go to the near side. Now what a catch by Joe Horn, out of bounds, Joe Horn at the 45-yard line, a Willie Mays basket catch. Working on Irv Smith. Look at this, there's nothing fancy to it, it's just streak, speed against speed, the ball's thrown, Smith can't find the ball at the last minute, but the right hand comes down and looks like it grabbed a hold of the face mask of Joe Horn, so tack 15 yards onto this. They just called pass interference as opposed to a face mask. Obviously, decline, take the penalty there still. So Memphis gets another positive call and they march it toward the Baltimore goal line. Now the ball's on the 46. First down and 10. Draw play to Shipman. Shipman ducks inside, but is tackled by Tracy Gravely. Somehow Gravely was able to grab his ankle and haul him down. And this guy runs a 4.2 40-yard dash. In the eye, Joe Bayless picks the side, goes around to the right, gets good penetration, but the terrific quick feed of Shipman is able to avoid that, get the ball up field. Very impressed so far with the play selection that Ricky Foggy comes in here with, mixing it up, runs it in, gets that defense and tries to slow him up a little bit, throws the hot routes to the slot, and when he feels comfortable, takes it downtown to the wideouts. Gains one yard, second down and nine. Underneath, incomplete, and a flag will be thrown on the play. Ken Watson. Seventh year player out of Livingston called for pass interference. Brad Breedlove, the intended receiver. And Don Matthews, not at all pleased with that call. Pass interference, Baltimore number 38, first down. Take a look as the play is going to happen. Ricky Foggy's got plenty of time. Great protection. Good vision down the field. Throws the ball to the outside. Watson's over top. They say the contact take, takes place as that left arm came in front. So Ken Watson gives the Mad Dogs an automatic first down with the ball spotted at the 35. Bootleg, Foggy with plenty of room in front of him. And Foggy goes down at the 25, and they may spot it at the 24. 11-yard pickup for Ricky Foggy. And the play action worked to perfection.
for Memphis. This is a play that you want to call the Sally Rand or the naked bootleg as he comes in. He fakes that inside dive play. Gets Gerald, uh, Alfred Payton to bite really hard down inside. Loses contain. Now it's foggy one-on-one. -on -one. Lots of pasture in front of him. The only guy he sees is the corner, Courtney Griffin, that comes up to make the tackle. But not before he's picked up nine yards and puts him in a great second and short situation. They give it to the up back. This is Perkins, and he picks up the first down. Bruce Perkins has been doing all the short yardage work. Grant Carter with the tackle. Take a good look at Tracy Ham going back, having a conversation with Mike Pringle on the sideline, trying to talk about what do you think we got to do? What do you think you can do? Where can I help you? What do, what do you see something that I don't see? And then if it happens, let's go out there and let's execute it. And let's get our team back in this ball game. Right now, it's Memphis controlling the tempo of this ball game. On the Baltimore 22-yard line, first down. Over the middle, complete. Big reception made deep inside Baltimore territory by Keith Benton, rookie out of Memphis. But they do a terrific job. They run the trips to the left of the field. Now he's going to fake the hitch. He's coming back to the slot back on the quick post inside, who happens to have a chance to get inside uh, Ken Watson. He knows that when he steps back there, one, two, fake. He knows he's going to get hit, but he stands in there, takes one for the dipper, and stays in there as Alfred Payton levels him. But he still makes the reception and the, and the pass completion. Keith Benton with only a second reception of the year. And now it's first down and goal to goal from the Baltimore five. And they run the option to the corner. And it looks like Memphis will get into the end zone for the touchdown. Charlie Miles running the option play. First year player out of East Carolina. Gets in and scores, and now this Memphis team are gaining a little bit of confidence. Some plays they set up earlier with Perkins running the ball inside. Now they get that defense to bite down inside. Quick toss on the option play. Gives it to Miles. Now it's just foot speed racing to the corner of the end zone, and Miles is able to beat the on-pursuing Baltimore Stallions and comes up for the first major of this game for the Memphis Mad Dogs. Charlie Miles' first touchdown of the year in 94. He played with the Sacramento Gold Miners. Second leading rusher that season with 403 yards and three touchdowns. Gus was actually Sacramento's nomination for Rookie of the Year off that team, so you could tell that he was very impressive with what he showed. So we get a penalty, and they bring it five yards back for Memphis and Charlie Miles managed to get into the corner of the end zone from our vantage point we really couldn't see it because it was such a close play but Charlie Miles makes it a score for Memphis and now the Mad Dogs looking very comfortable Charlie Miles' first touchdown of the year. Memphis rolling right now. And with the near side, Skinny Culver with the reception. Steps out of bounds at the 24. So Tracy Ham put together a good drive here. He's starting to operate on this Memphis defense. He shows a lot of confidence there. It's second and three, second and two, and he takes it down 15, 18 yards to the out pattern and throws something that he's very comfortable with. He and Culver, and this is a great thing that Don Matthews has said. Shannon Culver came back to camp this year more mature and ready to be a professional football player, ready to be a wide receiver. Culver has three receptions for 36 yards, picked up 14 on the last play. First and 10 from the 24. Culver again, setting up the quick screen, and he ducks underneath, gets to the 20. Johnny Anderson with the tackle. Tries to throw that hit screen to the outside, and Johnny Anderson does great pursuit from the inside, but while it's made up, is at the corner on that side, Damian Lyons comes from the outside, squeezes the play back in and turns that play back into pursuit. And there's where Anderson is the man on the spot. 
This is the seventh play of the drive. Second and five from the 20. Straight drop back for Ham. And Ham pursued, and he goes down at the 35. Johnny Anderson with the sack. His first of the season, and when Baltimore gets in the red zone in this game, they've struggled. They really have struggled, and you see again that Tracy Ham wants to take it deep. This Memphis secondary has coverage all over the field, and that allows Anderson to be able to break through. This guy's not that big. He's about 6'1", 220, out of the University of Pacific, and he keeps working and keeps working, and he's able to have the speed to chase down Tracy Ham from behind when he tries to break containment. So Walt Carlos Huerta comes into the game to attempt a 40-yard field goal. And Carlos Huerta remains perfect. He's three for three on the evening. And your score is now 13 to nine. Carlos Huerta has been all the offense so far for this Baltimore squad. That's very important for them that when they get down in the red zone, even though they have made some mistakes, an interception, a sack, a fumble, but they are not coming away empty handed. This young man who was picked up in the dispersal draft out of the Las Vegas Posse team has really added a great kicking dimension to this already very potent Baltimore Stallion team. Carlos Huerta is kicked 50, 52 yard, and a 42 yarder. Three field goals, three for three. Came into the game, nailing 79% of his field goals, which is fifth best in the league this year. So Memphis elects to take the football at the 35 yard line. On first down, draw play. This is Miles up to the 40, and He'll go backwards. His forward progress should establish the ball at the 40-yard line. The scoring drive, seven plays, covering 32 yards, and Carlos Huerta caps it off with a 40-yarder, his third of the game. He says still having a tough time to score in the majors, but at this point, as long as Memphis doesn't open up the scoring on this. 13 to 9 is the kind of score that you'd like to have the opportunity to come back from, and Tracy Ham certainly has the ability to disrupt it. Second and five from the 40. Catch made at the 45 yard line. Kendrick Jones hauls it in. He gains eight. Danny, you look at Ricky Foggy, who hadn't played a lot prior to this game. Give him a grade on how he's done since replacing. Damon Allen. Right now, I got to give him an A. I think he's doing pretty well. He is taking exactly what this Baltimore defense is going to give him, which isn't a, much, a lot. And then he's going to take it on himself a little bit on the naked bootleg, make a lot of things happen. He's creating the best defense against this Tracy Ham team, and that's keeping Tracy Ham on the bench. Almost down. Foggy puts it on the money, but Joe Horn unable to catch the football. That hit him in the worst place possible, right in his hand. Ricky Foggy, four of seven, 53 yards, and he should have been four of five of seven here. That's a long pass, the wide side out, and it hits him exactly where you say in a bad place. Joe Horn just taking his eye and his concentration off ever just for that split second, and the ball hits the ground. It makes it second and 10. You can anticipate that this Baltimore defense is going to get after Ricky Foggy on this play. Because of injuries, Joe Horn is the veteran receiver on this team. He's got to make plays like that. This ball be again. Another completion. Benton. Keith Benton up to the 45-yard line. And he did a good job of running after he caught the football and picks up the first. Baltimore came with the blitz. They brought O.J. Brigance. They also brought Matt Goodwin, the outside linebackers, and it forced Ricky Foggy to stand in the pocket, and he made a big completion. Pick up of 17, time running out in the half. To the near side, incomplete intended for Brad Greedlove, Charles Anthony. Defensively covering Greedlove on the play for Baltimore. 13 seconds remaining in the first half of play with Memphis leading the Stallions 13 to nine. Just remember now, at the last three minutes of the half, the clock is stopped after every play, particularly on the incomplete pass. 
Now it, it is remarked. If it's a running play inside, it is remarked. And then the clock will start. So you can get a lot of plays off in the CFL in this short 13 seconds. Second and 10 from the 45. He dumps it off. This is Perkins running for the first down with more room. Perkins down to the 25. Bruce Perkins, big 20-yard gain. And with three seconds left on the clock, Memphis has the ball on the 25-yard line of Baltimore. Play action freezes everything inside, but Ricky Foggy's able to break out a contain of Alfred Payton and finds Perkins just slipping out into the flat. Perkins does a terrific job getting the ball up the field and picks up big yardage with only about three seconds to go. And at this point, you can see that Memphis would like to call and probably has called a timeout. There's one timeout in each half in the Canadian Football League, so therefore the clock is not going to start. And Nick Maestrom comes on for Pepper Rogers' squad as they utilize the time on the clock very well. And we have another timeout call. Looks like Baltimore will waste their timeout. Exactly. They want to make that thing and make him think just a little bit. Uh, make this young kicker think about it a little bit. And that, that guy is ready to call the half right there. The clock gun is ready to be fired. Nick Maestrom. His father is the mayor of Anchorage, Alaska. And he's also a slot back, but because of inconsistency on the year, Donald Eagle Quique was the kicker for this team last week, but had problems with immigration. And we'll have to get that sorted out before he is allowed to play in the CFL again. Wait, BK, being one of the kickers that played last year, for the Baltimore CFLers before they were named the Stallions. 33 yard field goal by Maestro, looking to remain perfect on the evening. And it's blocked! It's blocked! Scramble for the football, here's Maestro. And Nick Maestro goes down at the 35. O.J. Brigance crushes him, but Charles Anthony blocks the field goal, and that is how the first half of play will end for Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The bottom left of your screen, take a good look. Charles Anthony, number nine, comes in and really sails himself out, does an excellent job of getting in the line of the kick. Number 21 is Irv Smith that comes up with it. Now it's a free ball. We're throwing it out there. And he, have you ever seen rugby before? Because this is a little piece of it. Nystrom is looking for a place. Maybe he can ladle it back to somebody. But nothing's going to have anything to do with it. O.J. Brigance takes him down. Charles Anthony blocks the field goal. And at the end of one half of play, Memphis, a keep the lead, 13-9. And another dangerous guy for this Baltimore team, Mike Pringle, standing at the 14-yard line. Well, also back deep, Chris Wright. This will be Pringle from his 10. Mike Pringle still on his feet, and he goes down at the 17-yard line. Return of eight yards as Tracy Ham comes back onto the football field. Not really a great half for Tracy, 9 of 13 for 104 yards, but all year long, his numbers really haven't been up. They really haven't, and that's because the guys like Chris Wright and Mike Pringle, he's always starting on a short field. They have a great return team right now, and also they have the number one punter in Josh Miller in the CFL that keeps backing teams up. So he's getting the ball first and 10 on about the 25, 35, 45, and he makes a lot of things happen, so his numbers statistically are not up. Speaking of Josh Miller, he has not punted once this evening. On first down, Skinny Culver with the reception on the quick screen. He ducked inside, gets up to the 27-yard line. Rodney Harding making the tackle. Gain of nine. Tracy Ham coming out, trying to establish some patience, having some confidence and some things to do. Get this Memphis defense to have to chase people wide, maybe slow them down so somewhere in the fourth quarter, if they're a little tired, somebody's able to break something big open. 
Ham came into the game, 83 of 161 for 1,300 yards. Second and short. And Pringle goes through the middle. Mike Pringle up to the 45-yard line. Some hard running by Mike Pringle, tackled by Ed Berry, gain of 18. And Danny, Mike Pringle came back on Wednesday, their only day in pads, and he said he wanted to definitely get some good work in. He did, and that was a really inspirational workout that they had, and he said that Mike Pringle only knows one speed, and that's full out. Breaks the point of attack, and he's running straight to the safety, and you can see he runs right through the tackle of Eric Nelson. First down and 10. This is Reggie Perry at midfield. Wide open on the crossing route. Perry tackled by Ford. And Tracy, Tracy Ham with the big completion. First catch for Perry. Hurry up offense, trying to limit a little bit of the defense that Memphis has been able to have some success with in the first half. Perry, just to show you how innovative he can be and then how he can be in this athletic, in the CFL, came to the Baltimore Stallions as a fullback and ends up being a slot back. 6'2", 205 out of USC. And that last shot that he took just sends him off to the sideline. As you see, the good thing about it, he looks to be okay walking off under his own steam. Maybe just lost his breath. Reggie Perry got popped pretty hard, played quarterback at USC behind Todd Marinovich and Rob Johnson. First to 10 from the 54. Here's Pringle, flats all over the field. And Pringle plows his way down to the 39. Some hard running by Pringle. He's got a whole lot of energy to start this second half of play. A couple of flags down offsides against Memphis. They'll decline those penalties. Offside, Memphis 45, decline, first down. Mike Pringle gains 16 yards and they'll add, rather they'll decline the penalty. 16 yard gain and they'll be at the 39. Gus, I can tell you that uh, Don Matthews came into the league in 1977 as a defensive coordinator with the Edmonton Eskimos when I was playing. He can be motivating at halftime and it looks like it had a big effect on him. Stallions load up the far side with five receivers. Quarterback draw for Ham, but he will not go anywhere. Steven Bates with the tackle and looks like Baltimore trying to surprise some people there. And, and I think it was a, it could have been a good call at that time going back with the quarterback draw and he's trying to get Steven Bates to go on the other side of the left guard Mike Withercombe but all of a sudden Bates does an excellent job gets his shoulders back in front and is able to spin back and get into the hole and get his hands on Tracy Ham. Gain of only one second and nine. Bates was drafted by the Rams in 1990. Played on the Colts developmental squad in 91. His hand rolling, sets himself, fires incomplete. Chris Armstrong was open, but Tracy Ham threw the ball behind him. And they'll have to bring on the field goal team again. Tracy's spinning out. Now it's a hard throw because he's going to plant quickly and he doesn't know. He kind of can sense somebody's behind him. Catch a little bit of vision out of Bates coming up in his eye and he just releases the ball and it sails behind the intended receiver, Chris Armstrong. Carlos Huerta on to attempt a 46-yard field goal. Well within his range and his leg strength. He's six from nine from this distance. And he remains perfect on the evening. Carlos Huerta throws his fourth field goal of the game, and Baltimore getting a little bit closer on the Huerta field goal. Gus, here's an example where I think Chris Wright showed that he is a rookie, catches the ball. Now, if he downs the ball right there, he gives up a single. One point for Memphis. And then they scrimmage the ball, first and 10 on the 35-yard line. He brings it out, tries to make something happen, backs Tracy Ham and the offense up and then where they catch the ball, and they make it first and 10 on about the eight. 
You can see Don Matthews having a conversation over there with him. Don Matthews very involved in running the special teams of the Baltimore Stallions. So you would rather have good field position than to give up a point? At this point, it's, it's, it's 13 to 12. You make it 14 to 12. You still have to kick a field goal if you're going to get ahead of it. So why not? One point, and there's a lot of kicks left on the clock. From the eight, Pringle. And Pringle gets up to the 10 and runs into a roadblock of Memphis players. Not a big gain. Rodney Harding and Tim Cofield in on the play. This has been a tenacious Memphis defense. They've gotten after it. These guys aren't supposed to uh, be able to be this conducive as far as making a lot of things happen. They have a lot of glue in there that holds them together. There's a good look at Tim Colfield, who has great experience, five years in it. Greg Battle with nine, Rodney Harding with 11. So these guys have jailed together very quickly as a unit. Second down and eight. Ham lets it go, and it's complete. At the 24, flags on the play. Complete at the 24. Robert Clark with the reception, a 14-yard gain, but they'll march this one back. A holding penalty called against the Stallions. Certainly does since they made a big gain and picked up the first down, and it looked like they may have been calling out on the right holding tackle. The, the big cuz, Neil Fort, 66. You see the concerned look on Don Matthews' face, working that gun pretty good. And you can hear, if you listen closely, Don Matthews giving Boris Cheek a mouthful. I think what he was trying to say was that Memphis was sending some people in late on the sideline. He wanted an illegal substitution, which constitutes a 15-yard penalty. Second and 13 from their own five. Ham passing out of his own end zone. And Tracy Ham goes down in the end zone. That's a safety. And the Memphis Mad Dogs, the defense comes up with another big play. Alex Gordon making the sack and giving them two points. Now they also, now it goes back to the very first thing as far as the miscalculation of Chris Wright coming out of that end zone. He could have given up one. Now they have given up two points. Plus, Baltimore has to kick the ball off. The guys in front, that's big Alex Gordon. Along with Stephen Bates, terrific pressure, but that is caused. It's a cover sack. Look at that. Nobody's no place to go. A lot of heat quickly. Tracy Ham trying to get rid of the ball. Now, now Baltimore has to kick the punt off. They can either punt it or kick it off from the 35-yard line. But Memphis gets the ball back. Plus two points. So the rookie mistake has cost the Stallions. Two additional points plus the football. And Memphis, they've taken a 15 to 12 lead now, and they'll get the ball on offense coming up. Now it comes after that safety also. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I want to just clarify. Memphis has the opportunity in the option. They can either have them kick it off, which is a punter, or kick off, or they can scrimmage the ball from the 35 yard line again, just like the field goal. And it's, and it's confusing to Pepper. I mean, when we, hey, when, we were in the, when we were in the press conference yesterday, he, he was talking about it. He says, I don't know what to do with 12 guys. I don't know what to do with timeouts sometimes. I don't know what to do with illegal substitution or eligible numbers or ineligible numbers. And I think at some point, Pepper Rogers is just dumb like a fox because this guy knows a lot about football. And that's his job as the head coach to go out there and learn these rules of the new football league that he's a part of. And you but see a chuckle said, from me. You explain it to me first, and then we'll both know. Michael Cochran, the side judge, hearing it from Pepper Rogers, and you can see Cochran smiling. Hey, coach, you got to look at the rule book a little bit more. On first down, here's Shipman, rather Miles. Miles breaks it outside and turns it back upfield and gets to the 45. Pepper Rogers. 
one of the most animated coaches uh, we've seen in the CFL this year. Graduated from Georgia Tech in 1954 and coached at Kansas, UCLA, Georgia Tech, and the Memphis Showboats of the USFL. And the guy he's talking to at the left is Brett Williams, used to be nicknamed the Coaster, well-known defensive tackle in the league, all-star, all-pro, who is helping out as a special team coach and a volunteer coach. First and from the 45, complete the horn. Ricky Foggy hit immediately after making the throw by Gerald Bayless. Horn gets close to the 50, pickup of only five. You're going to take a three-step drop, and the guy leaned on the other side is Gerald Bayless. And that guy right there is Adam Rita. Been a head coach in this league, great cup champion with the Toronto Argonauts. Been a head coach also with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Terrific guy that knows a lot. An offensive coordinator with the Edmonton Eskimos in 1993 when they won the Grey Cup. Damon Allen was the quarterback. So he has his quarterback at hand right now. A man that knows a lot about the CFL. Adam Rita, the assistant head coach now, no longer the offensive coordinator. This pass is incomplete. Buddy Geis, who coached at Tulane last year and also coached Sterling Sharp with the Green Bay Packers, is the new offensive coordinator for this Memphis Mad Dogs team. And Horn, unable to haul the football in, hit his hands and bounced out. And that brings on Canner to send it away. This time with a little bit more experience for the rookie Chris Wright as he stands at his 20. After bringing the ball out of the end zone, the last time he received a punt. Canner punting from the 35. End over end punt to the near side. At the 21, here's Wright. Wright still on his feet. And Chris Wright goes down at the 24-yard line. 44-yard punt. Five-yard return. So with... 5.03 left in the third quarter. Memphis still leading 15-12. On first down, we have penalty flags again. We're looking at Sharp or Donish, last year's most outstanding lineman in the CFL in his rookie season. So he's playing with two very weak ankles. Wasn't even supposed to play this this game. That's exactly right. They were going to try to sit him down. Procedure. Baltimore is 68. First down repeat. They were going to try to sit him down because his ankles are really having some problem. But just at the bottom of your screen, he makes that quick move inside. But during the course of the week's practice, John Earl tore a bicep muscle who was the right guard. So therefore, it puts his brother, his twin brother, Guy Earl, playing the right guard. And Pordonis had to suit up. So he is playing out there with a couple of really bad ankles. Cordonis graded out 90% or better 13 times last year. Here's Culver on the quick screen with room. Skinny Culver inside the 50. Finally slides down at the 47, picks up six. Now this is the kind of good matchup you like to see on a hitch screen because he puts Culver out there against Odegaard, and Odegaard is really going to respect the speed of Culver, and that allows that hitch screen to be set up in enough time for those, those offensive linemen to get out there and make a block. Second and 11. And Tracy Ham goes down at the 45, only a three-yard gain. When Ham throws the football this evening, it's kind of been feast or famine. He's looked a little confused on a number of plays. Cover and sack. I tell you what, this Memphis defense is playing well together as a unit. Some heat in front, scrambles Tracy, but look at the discipline they have. Stay with your man right until Tracy Ham breaks the line of scrimmage, then leave your guy, leave the receiver, come up and pursue, make the tackle short of the first down, and that's exactly what they did, and it puts Baltimore in the kicking situation. And Don Matthews talking to his all-star quarterback. Your attention, please. It's time again for Bruno Pantomino's best seat in the stadium. But right now we have an injury on the field. That's Greg Battle. Looks like he may have caught a cramp in his left calf. He's trying to stretch it out. That's, that's, that's a great call because that's exactly Greg Battle has historically had problems. Latter part of the games, third quarter, late, late in the third quarter, fourth quarter, 
of losing a lot of fluid and obviously it's cramping up very dramatically. Great this battle played with Winnipeg and he led the Blue Bombers in tackles four straight years from 89 to 1992. Had 100 or more tackles three years in a row from 89 to 91. Played with Las Vegas in 1994. Also then was traded to Ottawa, but was injured a lot. So we didn't get to see Greg Battle play the way that Greg Battle that we know. This year he's playing. When you're a linebacker and you played linebacker here in the CFL for 10 years, we've seen games all year. A lot of running and a lot of activity by the middle linebacker. And these things happen to these kind of guys a whole lot, I've, I've noticed, during the year. And at times, I, I think in, in, as far as pass coverage and also because the field is so wide, you've got to run from sideline to sideline. There is a lot of pursuit going on, and you've got to play really good pass defense. So you're really moving a lot, and it's very important. You've got to, you've got to keep your fluid intake in. Obviously, Greg uh, it sweats a lot, but he has some problems in losing that fluid, and then that causes the cramp. He ha he's been notorious of going off, coming back on the field five or six times through the course of the fourth quarter of games that I've noticed over the years that I've watched him. Attendance this evening, 31,221 at Memorial Stadium this evening. First place, Baltimore Stallions and the Memphis Mad Dog. And Miller sends it away, angled toward the near sidelines, and it goes out of bounds. And they will mark it as the official, the side judge, continues to walk. They're going to mark it at the 20 yard line. Yeah, a poor kick. He was really trying to get a little coffin corner there, but it came off the side of his foot. And Neil Payne, the official, had a keen spot and a keen eye on it, brought it up to the 20 yard line. And that will work against his average, and it'll also end the third quarter of play. So we've got one more quarter ahead of us with Memphis still hanging on 15 12. And we're starting the fourth and final quarter. From Baltimore, Charlie Miles carrying the ball on first down, and he picks up a big chunk of yardage and a first down gain of 12 and we're at the beginning of the fourth and final quarter of this Southern Division game Memphis leading Baltimore 15 12 but the fourth quarter it's been a telling story for both these teams for Memphis they've been outscored 55 29 in the fourth quarter this year while for Baltimore they've outscored opponents 35 to 13 to the far side, incomplete intended for Brad Breedlove. Ricky Foggy misfiring there. Done a good job of coming off the bench. Again, he really has control out there, and it looks like the offensive personnel around him have a lot of faith in his ability. It's important that Ricky Foggy gets somewhat production on first and 10, and he doesn't put himself in this situation. Second and long, knowing Don Matthews pretty well. This is the kind of situation he likes to get after the quarterback, force some pressure on him, see if he can make a turnover. Damon Allen wishing that he could be in the ball game right now. Second and 10 from the 31. Foggy to the far side, and little communication problem on the route. Joe Horn, the intended receiver. Ball thrown wide of Joe Horn. In the CFL, right now, Birmingham playing at Winnipeg, and they lead it 19 to 12 at halftime. Matt Dunnigan and the Birmingham Barracudas have hit a dry spell as of late, but that'd be a big win for them on the road this evening. Here's Canner standing at his own 16. Chris Wright back deep for Baltimore. Wright catches it on the run at the 50, flags on the play, and he gets inside Memphis territory. This will be a no yards penalty, maybe the 15 yarder because the punt team of Memphis not slowing up at all for Chris Wright. 
39 yard punt. Just to clarify, Gus, there is the 15 yard no yard when guys get caught in that five yard perimeter zone. There's no fair catch in the CFL, but you have to give the returner five yards. No yards. Memphis, 15 yard penalty. First up. Take a look as he comes in there. Chris Wright goes in there. Now the guy runs by him. It's pretty close on the way as he goes by. He could have been about three or four yards past him. Trying to really distract Chris Wright and maybe take his concentration off of it, but they get called for the no yards. If the ball, if you can see a coverage guy going down and trying to get out of the way, out of the zone, and it's unintentional, then it becomes the no yards penalty is only a five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Right, averaging 165 all purpose yards per game. First and 10. This is Robert Drummond, his first reception, lowers his head and picks up the first down at the 39. Drummond tackled by Ed Berry. Gain of 10. What a terrific athlete that Robert Drummond is. He's 6'3", about 215, out of Syracuse. And he is terrific as far as coming out of the backfield and doing as we just saw. Using it as a receiver, they try to get the mismatch with a guy that can turn 4-3 against the linebacker or even against the halfback because he's faster than most of the guys on that defense. First down from the 40. Drop play to Twingle. He hops over one guy and gets down to the 35. Rodney Harding thought he had Mike Pringle, but Pringle elevated, got over him, and picked up some positive yardage. Games five. And as we came into the ball game, this is how the Southern Division looked. Baltimore up five and two. San Antonio right on their heels, though, at four and four on the year. Followed by Birmingham, Memphis, and Shreveport. Guy Matthews has been a winner everywhere he's gone. Won six great cups as a defensive coordinator at Edmonton as he coached the guy that's standing right next to me, Dan Kepley. And coming up, we'll see if his team can put it in the end zone right after this. Here's Pringle to the 30. Mike Pringle picks up five yards as he's stopped by Greg Battle. Now, and he will be short of the first down, so Don Matthews has a decision to make here. It's going to be about third and about one. And right now, the, the kicker, Carlos Huerta, is out there in the CFL. Right now, when you line up, the defensive line lines up a yard off the line of scrimmage, and you guys got some people up front at this Baltimore offensive line. Subas at 285, with the comb on the left guard at 300, Earl at the right guard at 300. I would never second guess Coach Matthews' decision because I respect him fully, but he feels right now that going for the field goal is the best thing to do and come away with some points and tie this ball game up. Well, Carlos Huerta has been perfect. Four for four, this one a 38-yarder, which will be his shortest of the evening. Hits the goal post. Carlos Huerta misses for the first time as it hit the left upright. And the fans here at Memorial Stadium unappreciative of the decision to kick the field goal, and they let the Baltimore Stallions know about it. Take a look. Good snap, good hole. It's a heck of a kick, except... You could give him a whole bag of balls again, and he probably couldn't hit that upright. But on this case, take a look at Pepper. Oh, yeah. Now I understand that. You don't have to worry about numbers, ineligible, uneligible, whatever it is. I know that hit the goalpost, and they, we don't give up any points. Pepper Rogers. What? 10.50 left in the fourth quarter, 15-12. Foggy throwing our first down, going for the long ball. Incomplete, but there is a flag. Oh, hold on, Gus. We got to take a look at this. Joe Horn, the intended receiver, had both hands on the football as it was thrown short. 
Let's go back. This is Courtney Griffin again on the corner. Now it's nothing but the street crowd. Got off a stop and go. He's got him beat by a couple of yards. Now as he goes up, watch Warren. He catches the ball. The contact's made after the catch, after the touch of the ball. And I don't think so. I think we just got away with one there as far as me being a referee for the night. So the pass interference call gives Memphis an automatic first down and a 33-yard gain. Vince Lombardi said, dancing's contact, football's a hitting spray. That was just, that wasn't even dancing. First and 10 from the 52, Shipman. Haven't heard from Shipman very much during the second half. He gets to the 47, another flag on the play at midfield. Send it back because holding against Memphis, sometimes the only way that you're going to be able to block a guy the caliber of Gerald Bayless is to hold him. Speaking of Gerald Bayless today, maybe why he's playing so hard, it's his birthday. Gerald Bayless is 33 years old today. And, I, yeah, that's, probably, that's right, hey, partner. Isn't it your birthday today? No, no, no. It was My yesterday. It was a couple days ago. A couple days ago? August 10th. And how old did you just turn? Uh, 21. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think more like 28. But that's okay. You're a young looking 28 year old fellow. I got times as old as you. <laughs> First down and long for Memphis from the 49. To the near side horn, complete at the 55. Keeps his feet going and plows his way ahead all the way down to the 45. Well, I take it, I tell you, between Dan Kepley and Mike Mayock, who will be joining us later during the year, was with us last year, I take more heat from you guys than I do from anybody else that I know. Well, it's only because now we look at you as one of our children, you know, because you're so young. Yeah. Take a look at Joe Horn, how well he does as far as looking this ball in. It's first and very long, about 25, and he picks up a significant amount of, of it back. And he puts Ricky Foggy in this Memphis Bad Dog offense in a situation of about second and four. Great things going on. They're keeping possession of the ball. And ticks are going off the clock. Game 15, second down and four. And complete. Again, another great adjustment at the end of the pattern by Joe Horn. And he lets it snow. It's a first down. 20-yard gain. Now, right at the top of your screen, now, you may not think this, but I think this is a call play. When they get even match to match, automatically, that Ferky Foggy is going to throw this ball behind the defender because all of his speed is going frontwards. The receiver knows he's going to come back for it, and that creates that separation and made what looked like a really tough catch very easy for Joe Horn. Big catch. Seven receptions, 118 yards. Joe Horn did not play college football, played junior college football. Itawamba Junior College in Mississippi. And he's having a big game, the second big game in a row for him. They keep it on the ground to Perkins. He picks up four. And slowly but surely, Memphis marching the ball downfield. They've been good. They have not been all that successful as far as getting, when they get into the red zone, as far as getting it into the end zone. One major score already. And it's important for them right now to see if they definitely come away with some kind of points. They need the field goal for sure, the major they would love. Out of the eye formation, second down, eight. They'll give it to the up back. Perkins headed for the end zone. Touchdown, Memphis. Bruce Perkins picks up his first touchdown of the year, and the Memphis Mad Dogs are in good shape with a little over eight minutes remaining in the ball game. I formation spreads this defense out. Counter dive, just all he does is hands it back and that collapse that whole left side of the Baltimore defense down. Perkins finds the open area, strides over the safety, gets into the end zone for the major. What a play, what a run by the big back out of Arizona State. And the extra point is good. Bruce Perkins, 23-yard touchdown. And the Memphis Mad Dogs continue to surprise this Baltimore team. They lead it 22 to 12. Memphis leads Baltimore 25 to 12 with two minutes and 59 seconds remaining in this ball game. And the 
Mad Dog just done everything right. Gotten a great performance from their defense as usual, and a solid performance from their offensive unit, led by Ricky Foggy in for Damon Allen. End of the game now. Carlos Huerta, who's four for five, kicking field goals this evening. He's made a 50-yarder, a 52-yarder, a 40-yarder, and a 46-yarder. Missed the shortest one of the evening, a 38-yarder, which could have tied the game at that time in the third quarter. Here's a 42-yard attempt right here for Carlos Huerta, the former All-American out of the University of Miami. And it's perfect. Carlos Huerta nails the 42-yarder and makes it a Gus another example of Tracy Hammond the Baltimore Stallions getting down in that red zone 30 yard line and coming away with only three points giving up another sack in a crucial situation to Tim Colfield and you can see maybe that's one of the reasons Tracy Ham getting some tape done to, a, to to the hamstring area to tighten it up, either the hamstring or the quad muscle in the front. And maybe he's just unable to get away from some of that heat. Makes it a 25-15 game, and Mad Dogs will accept the ball on their own 35. They pitch it. This is Miles, Charlie Miles, hitting the backfield. Miles does not go very far. Gus, again, we're in, the, we're in the last three minutes of the ball game, where now the clock is stopped until they respot the ball. Everybody gets on side, and so then now the clock is blown in. 236, 235 going in. So obviously, Memphis is going to try to run off as many kicks on that clock as they can, but it's important they've got to convert this second and long. Loss of one, second and 11. Complete underneath to Brad Breedlove. Charles Anthony with the tackle, but Mad Dogs will not have enough for the first down. Big call right here, Gus, because it's only going to be about a foot or two short. Nine yard pickup. No doubt, though, in Pepper Rogers' mind, he sends out the punt team. With the way their defense has been playing, I guess he doesn't want to take any chances. Well, they certainly have had some great success out there. And if this kicker counter can get the ball off, and this coverage team, that's the most crucial thing right now. Get down, be disciplined, stay in your lanes, and not allow Chris Wright to break a big one on you and get great field position for Tracy Ham. Stallions need a big return here for Chris Wright, who's at his own 25. White goes back to the 20. Breaks it upfield. Chris Wright up to the 40-yard line. Chris Good Wright running by Chris Wright. 50-yard punt, 20-yard return, and a new quarterback in the game now for Baltimore, Sean Jones, who led the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets to a national championship his senior year. And he's 15 of 30. 205 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception on the year. Tough situation to come in. Haven't had a lot of time at claim this year behind Tracy Ham. But in a crucial situation, you have to make something big happen. To the far side, complete to Armstrong. Armstrong headed to the sidelines, gets out of bounds, and stops the clock. First pass to Chris Armstrong. Chris Armstrong has been very quiet here in the second half. And he's showing emotion there. Wants the football. And there is another injured player. Looks like Shannon Culver. And Culver in a lot of pain right now as he grabbing his growing area. Colbert's been very active tonight, and at, at some point in time, 
You just never know what, what a, a very physical game has had on him. He came back and threw a great block. And he's been very physical out there, and it's starting to take its toll on the young receiver. Skinny Culver coming out of the game. He's got five receptions for 53 yards. And stung a little bit, but he's okay. Yeah, he's 5'10", 160 or so. I don't know why he gets the name Skinny, Ron. He's probably all buffed up. Big arms on him. Jim Sparrows not pleased with the way his team's performing right now. Second and four. For Sean Jones from the 46. Out of the shotgun, under pressure. And Jones trying to buy some time, unloads, and it's caught! Mark Orlando at the 51 yard line, and it looks like he'll get the first down. So the local boy comes up with the big reception. And uh, the advantage of having a new quarterback come in that's got some mobility and some fresh legs, able to get out of the chase that Memphis has, and Junior Robinson goes underneath to go for the pick. Mark Orlando, with that great concentration and soft hands, comes up with the big catch to keep the drive alive. The story on Orlando, not a lot of speed, but will catch anything thrown near him. Go to the near side, and a big hit. Put on Chris Armstrong by Junior Robinson. But Armstrong holds on to the football, gains six yards. Junior Robinson, 5'9", 185, out of my alma mater at East Carolina. Comes up and shows why he can close on that ball, makes a solid tackle. And maybe he's playing with a little more enthusiasm. He and his wife, Sandra, on August the 2nd, had their son, David the third. Second and five, and an interception. Don Odegaard. Picks it off and steps out of bounds at the 52, and that should be your ball game at this point. Don Odegaard, his fourth interception of the season, and Pepper Rogers will take this one right back on down to Memphis with a smile as Odegaard pretty much seals the game for the Dogs. Don Odegaard showed in his experience in the secondary, to going from safety, being prepared to play any position that you can, just give me an opportunity. Put me in, coach, I'll play anywhere. Plays at the halfback now with the injury to Ed Berry, and you can see the happiness on that guy's face. Comes up with the big pick. That's his fourth of the season. Fourth turnover of the ball game for Baltimore. And they've thrown three interceptions this evening. One fumble, deep in Memphis territory. Baltimore came into this game, ironically, plus 25 and giveaway takeaway. The number one team in the Canadian Football League. Exactly, and I think tonight that that's the thing that's going to really disturb Coach Matthews. It could be the effort, but also a lot of the mental errors that took place out there on the field. Second down, 54 seconds remaining between Memphis's fourth win of the season. Perkins running the football. Alfred Payton with initial contract contact as he tried to strip it away. Don Matthews will call timeout here. It stopped the clock. It'll be third and about four. It'll force Memphis into a punting situation. And hopefully, Don Matthews feels that he can get this ball back and possibly something can happen. 44 seconds again in the Canadian Football League is a long time. Don Matthews still coaching despite the score right now. He's coaching for next week. Keeping on his players, and ironically, we spoke to Matthews during the press conference. He said they had a great week of practice. He, he really did. He was uplifted by, after the long road trip, getting back home, having a, uh, an inspired day where they only had one practice with pads on. So they were out there, they're very enthusiastic, and he felt extremely comfortable that they were going to bounce back from the loss to the Calgary Stampede. Tanner at the 45. Wright fields it on the run. At the 25, trying to get outside, Chris Wright. 
goes backwards and is down at Chris the right 20. On the Eric Nelson with the tackle. The story of this game, folks, turnovers. Baltimore committing four turnovers, three interceptions, one fumble. Memphis, no turnovers. And, and, and also the same thing, Gus, is the, the fact of Tracy Ham and, and the Baltimore offense that is noted for his potency as far as getting down again into that red zone and coming away with nothing sometimes or having to settle for a field goal. This is a team that up until this point had scored 21 touchdowns in 28 quarters coming into this game. Tracy Ham, the CFL's ninth all-time leading passer. Rough game for him this evening. It's Jones, and they give it to Pringle. Pringle breaking through. Tackle from behind at the 49. Memphis in the soft zone right now. 27 seconds remaining on the clock. And that rush right there would definitely break a 100-yard mark for, for Mike Pringle, and this will be the first time since the beginning of last year that they may lose a ball game or going to lose a ball game when Mike Pringle has rushed for over 100 yards. Gain of 25, 19 seconds left. Jones to Pringle out of the backfield, and he drops a football. A flag in the Stallions' backfield. Rodney Harding looks like he may be called for roughing the passer or a holding penalty. Holding. Baltimore is 65. 10-yard penalty. Very concerned look when Jim Spirals, the owner of the Baltimore Stallions, had a great opportunity to visit with him, as he said, at halftime. He's a very charismatic fella. He has a lot of belief and faith in both his team and the CFL. Pringle again. And Mike Pringle tackled by Greg Battle, who came up with a big interception. His fourth of the season to kill yet another Stallions drive. And this is one game that Pepper Rogers and his entire staff will take some pleasure in viewing when they watch films next week. As you can see right there, the clock's going to run out in the Canadian Football League, but one play still has to be run, and a victory for the Memphis Mad Dogs. Here's Pringle again, and ironically, Pringle on the last play, no gain as Mike Armstrong comes up with the tackle. So this one ends with Memphis beating Baltimore 25 to 15. And Mike Pringle, he's the all-time leading CFL rushing leader. Tucker!